So this is experiment 17, and we will study the heat of neutralization. You have seen in chapter 17, uh, you can calculate the heat, and from the heat you can calculate the enthalpy. Now the enthalpy of the reaction. Today's reaction is an acid-based reaction, which is called the neutralization. Now, neutralization reactions, they are always exothermic. The reason they are exothermic because the for for example for strong acid strong base reaction the net ionic equation is H plus plus OH minus it gives you H2O. So if you notice that H plus plus OH minus gives you H2O, there is only bond formation. There is no bond breaking. Okay? So now that's why you will always have a negative delta H because delta H is equal sum to the bond broken plus or minus sum of the bond form. Now, is it going to be negative all the time? Yes. But what about the magnitude? Is it the same for all acid base? No. For It could be the same for similar concentrations of strong acids. Okay? And uh, however, when you have weak acid, strong base, or weak base, strong acid, that's going to be different. The reason is that weak acids or weak bases, they don't get dissociated right away. Right? And since the reaction, the dissociation is not complete, while the heat is being generated by or released by forming water, some of the heat is being used to dissociate the undissociated acid or base. Okay? Now, we are going to measure this experimental. As you know, heat is equal to mass times specific heat capacity of the solution, which is in this case water, times delta T. So the mass, I can easily determine it. If I have the volume, and I know the density, I will take it around 1. So I can determine the mass. The specific heat capacity of water, it's constant, it's 4.18. And what I have to determine experimentally is delta T. So all what I need to do is measure the temperature of the solution before mixing and after mixing. Okay? Now I will put my, the, it doesn't matter which one we put first, but we will proceed by putting the, the base. And to do this, we need to start setting up our experimental setup. Mixing to homogenize, it's very important. Because if you just add the acid to the base without mixing. Inside the solution you will have hot spots and cold spots and your data will be misleading. So that's why we need to make sure that we are mixing, we are stirring while mixing so we homogenize and therefore we have the same temperature uh, among all, all, all the solution. For that you will take a magnetic bar, make sure you're works. Now, to measure your temperature, obviously you will need a thermometer. In the thermometer, we have a digital one. So, which will help with the precision. Okay? One of the questions that you will need to answer when you write your lab report is about the precision of the thermometer. So you go back to chapter one if you forgot how to determine the precision of a measuring device. Okay? So you will make sure that the probe of the thermometer is reaching your solution like this. And that you can stir. And this is how your setup will look like. 
first take the base, you will need 10 milliliter. So you can measure around 15 milliliter here. And the base is potassium hydroxide. With the volumetric pipette, you will measure 10 milliliter. Now that's going to be my initial temperature. Now I need to wait some time for the thermometer to stabilize. And this temperature is going to be the initial one. Now for the final one, which one I take? When I add the acid, I will be watching the thermometer. And the final one is going to be the highest temperature that you read. Okay? So you have to keep watching the thermometer and checking the values. When you see that the temperature starts to drop, so you take the highest value that you have seen on the thermometer or you measure. Okay? Now when we see that the, te the temperature stabilized inside our calorie meter, we can proceed by adding the acid to it. So it seems that it's fluctuating between 21.1, 21.2. Okay? That's because of the mixing. Now, make sure for the mixing to be a gentle mixing, not very fast and not very slow. Okay? So you can record your initial temperature. Now we will take the acid first, we will take the hydrochloric acid. The same way you need 10 milliliter. So you measure 15 from here. And now keep watching the thermometer. You can clearly see that the temperature is increasing. As I have mentioned, you keep looking at your thermometer until that the temperature starts to drop. And here the temperature starts to drop. It reached 40.8 and now it seems that it's going to level up. So the maximum temperature that you read on your thermometer, that's going to be your final temperature. So now you have your initial temperature, you have your final temperature. This will allow you to calculate your delta T. The mass of the solution, you know, you know the volume of the solution, 10 plus 10, it's 20 and the density is 1, so the mass of the solution is 20. And the specific heat capacity for water is 4.18, therefore you can calculate heat. To calculate enthalpy, it's heat over the number of mole. Now I will explain this in the post-lab discussion. Okay guys? Now you will repeat the same thing with the weak acid, which is the acetic acid or ethanoic acid. I'll leave the observation to you. In your mind, you should decide whether you will see the same heat coming out or coming out the coming out the reaction between strong acid, strong base, weak acid, strong base, or not. Okay, guys, so now that you have finished your experiment, you should have collected two main data, or actually four. You should have collected the initial temperature, say you found it around 22, and the final temperature, say around 
41, you can calculate delta T, which is in this case 19 degrees. Yes. Okay? Now, I'm not saying that the initial temperature in the second experiment has to be the same. It's up to you guys. It's what you have measured. But in principle, suppose they are the same. Now, the delta T for the, uh, the second one, weak acid, strong base, I personally would expect it to be a little bit lower, so the delta T is 17. Now once you have, have these data, you can calculate the mass of the solution from the volume. Since density, we will take it as 1 gram per milliliter. So the 20 milliliter should give you 20 gram. Now that you have all the data in this table, you can simply calculate the heat, which is equal to the mass of the solution, multiplied by the heat, specific heat capacity of the solution, multiplied by delta T. Okay? Keep your delta T always positive, so it's going to be T final minus T initial. Now that you have calculated your uh, your heat, you need to calculate your enthalpy. You need to keep in mind that delta H, an output absolute value, it's equal to the heat over the number of mole. But we have discussed previously that the delta H of neutralization, we said it's always negative because it's an exothermic reaction. I don't have bond uh, broken, I only have bond forming. Now, the fact that delta H is equal to Q over N, and you have Q, you need to look for N. N in this case, it's the number of mole of, uh, say, limiting reactant, but since we have similar concentration for the acids and base, and we are using same volume, so we will end up having same number of moles, so we don't have limiting reactant or excess. It should go to completion. Now your net ionic equation, it's equal to its H plus, plus OH minus, to give you H2O. So any number of moles you take, it's fine. You can take the number of moles of H plus formed, or number of, uh, I'm sorry, number of mole of H plus consumed, number of mole of OH minus consumed, or number of mole of H2O produced. Now the easiest one is to take number of mole of H plus, because you can simply say it's Cm times V. That's equal to 3 molar multiplied by 10 milliliters, so you have to converted to liter, 10 to the power minus 2 liter. And that's going to give you 0 0.03 mole. Now that you have calculated the heat, and you have the number of mole, you can calculate the value of delta H in both cases, X and Y. So now that you have the values of the enthalpies, and you have the theoretical ones, you can calculate the percentage error of your experiment, which is equal to what? In the case of strong acid, strong base, it's going to be equal to the absolute value, x, whatever value you found, okay, minus, so I'll put minus 57.3, of course x is a minus value as well, okay? divided by the theoretical value which is minus 57.3 multiplied by 100% and you will find the value of your error. Now it's not enough to give the percentage error and that's it. You have also to discuss the reason why did you get this, this error and especially if your error is, is big. Now one of the reasons is that we assume that the styrofoam cup, which represents our 
calorie meter, it doesn't absorb heat. But in reality, it does. So this is one of the, uh, of the uh, uh, reasons why you have certain error. Okay? Another uh, uh, source of error could be the quantities that you are measuring with your, with your pipette. If you take a little bit more or you take a little bit less, okay, that also will generate some error in your uh, experiment. Thank you.